Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us for today's event. How to accelerate pipeline velocity with Sugar Automate, previously known as the Customer Journey plugin. I'm Frank Cuccio, Customer Success Manager at BrainCell, and I will be your host for today. Also on the line, we have Brian Wise, VP of Account Management at Sugar CRM, and Kim Troy, Solutions Consultant at Sugar CRM. Glad to have you both here. We're going to be covering a lot in a short amount of time. So we're going to jump right in to Kim demoing Sugar Automate. I hope you enjoy. Here, a new lead has come in to Sugar. Now, I'm sure you're all familiar with Sugar's workflow automation process definitions uh, that can be used to do things like uh, routing a lead to appropriate uh, rep based on maybe territory or region. Um, but in this example, we're going to take a look at the industry, and then using that industry, Sugar is going to apply the appropriate playbook, so the appropriate process that needs to be, um, you know, taken in order to qualify a lead from a, maybe a different type of industry. So here, just for an example, we might have, you know, leads coming from various places, maybe banking, education, manufacturing, and there might be different questions that we ask of somebody that's from a bank as opposed to someone uh, from manufacturing. So we want to make sure that the right process is being followed. So, so I'm going to come up here and populate this industry field. Let's, let's say this is a manufacturing lead. And as you see, just by saving that lead record, Sugar is automatically adding the appropriate manufacturing lead qualification process. So without, you know, without thinking, you know, this is great for new users or also experienced users. They don't have to think about it. They're assigned a lead. They're given this playbook right, you know, right here. They know exactly what, ne what needs to get done, what steep steps need to be taken. Right. So this kind of ensures that there's consistency, you know, in in this particular process throughout the uh, company. You know, you don't have people going off and doing their own thing. Everybody's doing the same, you know, the same thing. And, and they're being giving, you know, a nice script here, a map of what they need to get done. So as Brian had um, pointed out earlier, this is really just kind of a visual representation of a process. Right. And there can be multiple processes assigned to any any record. But in this case, uh, you know, it's made up of different milestones here, right? And then all of the steps that are involved that need to be accomplished in order to get to that end result, which in this case would be lead qualification, right? So you, as you see, as uh, Jim Brennan, the person assigned to this lead, I see everything that I need to get done, right? And as I, as I go through and complete these tasks, You'll notice on the right hand side, we have a nice visualization that goes, that works in tandem with the uh, Sugar Automate playbook. So as you see, you know, each one of these segments of the chart represents one of the milestones in the journey. And as we proceed through this process, and as I complete my tasks, you see that we're progressing here on this journey as well. So this gives a nice um, visual for maybe uh, leadership. You know, if they want to see where we are in a process, they land on this record, they can automatically very quickly see, oh, we're about 20%, you know, through this qualification process. They can see what Jim has done so far, what needs still needs to be done. So it gives, you know, anybody that lands here has a nice picture of where we are. They've got that 360 degree view of where we are in that process. So this is great for, you know, giving that playbook, keeping people, you know, consistent, keeping them on task. But you can also make sure that the, the refs are following the steps. You know, you may have somebody who goes, oh, you know what, I don't want to do all this stuff. I'm just going to go ahead and qualify this lead. Well, you can put blockers on some of these steps as well to make sure that everybody's doing what needs to get done. So here in this example, I have we can't confirm, we can't uh, qualify this lead and confirm an opportunity until we determine the monthly and annual revenue, right? I just used the, the pre previous task. So he cannot go in here and say, I'm done. He can't move forward until X, Y, and Z is done, right? So I'm just going to go ahead and complete this task. I'm cheating. And if you'll notice, all these things turned yellow. This is kind of a showing you, it's highlighting like, hey, some, somebody skipped something. We wouldn't do that. Uh, but I just wanted to show you by 
by uh, completing this task, I can now go ahead and say, all right, let's, let's confirm the opportunity and we're on our way to qualifying this lead. Okay, so, um, so once your lead is qualified, you're ready to confirm that opportunity. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna jump to an opportunity record here. Okay, and jump right in. So the uh, lead qualification has been complete. We've created a new opportunity and now it's being uh, handed over to that sales rep, right? So the sales rep, uh, you know, is starting a conversation with this prospect, TJ O'Rourke, and maybe something important is to find out who the competitor is during that, that uh, an initial uh, conversation. And based on who that competitor is, you may take you know, different types of strategies to attack this oppor uh, opportunity. So we're talking to TJ O'Rourke and in the conversation they say, hey, uh, yeah, we're also looking at these guys called HubSpot. So here, so Jim's going to uh, populate that competitor field and using process definition, Sugar is going to apply a HubSpot playbook. So immediately, uh, the rep is being directed to this competitive playbook that's going to highlight where our strengths are, where we, we do well against this particular competitor, what their weaknesses are, so we can really focus on you know, the disadvantages of this uh, competitor and while we're on that first phone call we can you know show how strong we are where we do well and then plant those seeds of doubt about HubSpot oh yeah you know they make you do this that you know they don't have this they don't have reporting so you can bring that up right away so you're already elevating yourself and kind of making them hmm, think twice about the other guy so here as a sales rep I'm given this playbook it's right there I didn't have to go looking for it and I'm completing, I'm talking about this, you know, I'm talking about each one of these things, I'm bringing it up in our conversation, and I'm not, what I'm not doing is I'm not adding a lot of notes, I'm not entering data onto this, I'm not adding, okay, I talked, that, I talked about the free version, I talked about how they, you know, limit our email, we're not typing all that data in, it's there, and what I'm doing is just going, yep, I, we talked about that, yep, we discussed that. So when uh, sales leadership is looking at this record, they can say, hey, what's Jim been up to? I see he's talking to TJ O'Rourke, and I see that he's covered all of the good stuff. He's done everything that we need him to do. That's great. So it's giving that visibility into the sales leadership, and it's also, you know, it, it's giving you that, the tools that you need to go up and be successful in this opportunity. So, and, you know, without this, you know, at your fingertips, maybe you've never heard of this guy HubSpot before. So you'd have to end the call, maybe do some research, go, you know, Google, you know, tell me some more, find out more about HubSpot, where are they weak, you know, why are we better? Maybe check with some of your, uh, you know, your colleagues. Have, have you ever gone up against HubSpot? How, you know, how did you handle it? How should I handle it? By the time you do all that, get all that information, figure out your strategy, you get back on the phone, you may have already lost the deal, right? You know, you've got to move quickly in sales. We don't want to have to wait. We don't want to have to get back to them. They might have already moved on with HubSpot. So here we're attacking, you know, while we have them on that phone, we're attacking while it's hot. And comparatively, you know, there's probably more than one competitor. So say they might mention to you, oh yeah, we're also talking to these guys. Yeah. So, all right, we, we have a playbook for that too. So you can have multiple playbooks linked to one record. So here, okay, you're talking to them. Well, let me tell you, I've got my ammunition. This is why we are superior to those guys. So again, you can have both of these right there at your fingertips and you can, you know, boom, boom, boom. You can attack everything. Your leadership can see, all right, Jim's doing his job. He's hit everything that he was meant to talk about on this one opportunity. Okay, so so this is kind of just from a competitor strategy, you know, standpoint. But you might also have, say, like a sales process, right? I'm not gonna I'm not gonna for this demo. I'm not gonna pull that one up. But just say you have a certain process that you want your reps to follow during that sales cycle, which might be maybe tied to the sales stages. Uh, from a from a uh, rep standpoint, again, it's giving you that playbook. These are the steps you need to take that consistency across the board everybody's doing the same thing right we're all following the same process and from a leadership standpoint you can see where are we in the process 
like who's doing what, you know, what step are we at? If we're getting stalled somewhere, maybe in an opportunity, the past couple of opportunities, we get stalled at the proposal stage. Why is that happening? Well, maybe under, under proposal, you see that it's getting stuck uh, uh, quote is submitted to legal for approval. Every time it gets stuck in legal for two weeks or so. And just if there's any lawyers on the call, I apologize. It's just popped to my head. Uh, not that that happens, uh, but it's giving leadership the awareness of where those um, bottlenecks are, and then they can address that. All right, if they're getting stuck in legal for a reason, make a phone call. Or are we not providing the right information? Are we, you know, do you, or do you have to come back to us for more details before you can sign off on something? You can take action. You can identify the bottlenecks, the problems, take action, and expedite that sales process. Yeah, I was just chiming into this helps a lot with forecasting. So making sure that everything is checked off before you actually move something from upside into forecast. It helps a lot with leadership and visibility. Um, and then you can also have different sales processes for different industries. We all know uh, sometimes healthcare industry takes a little bit longer to close deals. You might need a BAA. You might need to um, see if they're, they, they require HIPAA compliance. Those are things that you might move earlier in a sales cycle versus um, versus different selling into higher tech or high tech or manufacturing. So this can be broken down into sub verticals. Um, the processes obviously change and it's all about learning um, through. So we're moving the sales cycle as quickly as possible, but then also knowing when to forecast deals based off of our playbooks and where we are at the stage, what stage we are in the playbook, and then moving them into forecast once you get to that certain percentage. Okay, thanks Brian. So um, because we have all these awesome automate tools and we're able to attack that uh, competition right out of the gate, we're able to win this opportunity, right? So it's great news. We've, we've closed business and now this guy, TJ O'Rourke, is going to move from being a prospect to an actual customer. So at this point, we're going to say we're going to update their status to customer. And once again, we've got and automate for that. Uh, Brian spoke about earlier an onboarding process. So by changing the status to customer, we're automatically adding that playbook for customer new account onboarding, right? So up to this point, as again, Brian mentioned earlier, it's, it's not just sales. At this point, there are other departments involved. You know, up to the opportunity, it's been the sales rep, he's handled the, you know, the leads, sales handles the leads and the opportunities. But now that they've begun become a customer and we're onboarding them, we may have other departments involved, right? So um, there could be IT who have to get them set up with uh, login credentials. Uh, maybe finance needs to get them into the system and uh, perhaps professional services, you know, just schedule, you know, give information, knowledge base, schedule training, that kind of thing. So as the owner of the record, you know, as the account manager, Jim Brennan, you know, this is a great account. It's a new customer. We want to make sure they're happy. We want to make sure the transition goes smoothly and there's no hiccups. So from his standpoint, he can see, you know, here we are, here's our roadmap. These are the things that I need to do. But he can also see who the other people are that have to, you know, do tasks as well. So here we've got Charles, uh, you know, and then Jane gets in on the action too. So for Jim, he can go through and complete his tasks. He wants to make sure to facilitate this whole process nicely and smoothly. So once he's done with his tasks, he can now follow up with Charles and see, you know, how come Charles hasn't entered the contact data, right? It's, it might be stuck here for a while. He might be able to preview. He can preview into that task. Maybe Charles has added some comments in here like, oh, I'm, I'm awaiting confirmation on an email address, something like that. Jim can see that and say, hey, you know what, maybe I can help expedite this by getting directly in touch with the contact and getting that email address. So it gives him that visibility to help him smooth and speed along this process. Another, uh, another feature uh, that we have with Sugar Automate is the ability of uh, to add related records without having to leave this view, without having to leave um, the account record or, or the journey record. So here, uh, Jim has a task to schedule a meeting. So if you hover on this, uh, this icon here, by clicking on this icon, it's actually opening up a meeting record. So if I you know, have the, the uh, 
account on the on the uh, phone. I want to schedule that meeting. You know, add the times in here. I hit save. It's automatically going to link that meeting record to the account, and and it's we're doing this all and completing that task right from the journey without having to go into that meetings module. All right. Oh, good stuff. So, okay, so now that we've gone through this whole process, we've onboarded our new account, they're an account, they're in a happy account, uh, but maybe something, maybe there's an issue arises, maybe they're having trouble logging into their system, so they log a case with us or a ticket. So we know how important it is for companies, it's critical actually to resolve tickets quickly and efficiently. So for that reason, you may want to use Sugar Automate to uh, you know, map out a process that you, that you want your agents to follow. So in this case, I have uh, different automation, Automate uh, playbooks based on case priority. Right, so this is a high priority case. These are the steps that need to be followed. Maybe if it's not, you know, if it's a lower priority, you may have a different procedure, right? So, so right off the bat, this case is created. The steps are added. So, a, you know, the customer service rep, if they're new, there's no question. They know exactly what the what they need to do. Even if it's, you know, an experienced agent, they don't have to second guess. They don't have to decide uh, which procedure should I follow. It's laid out for them, and again, it's nice consistency. You know, we're ensuring that the same procedure is is um, handled each case the same way, right? So we have that nice uniform response to the different cases, right? If now, as from a uh, standpoint of the rep, or I'm sorry, of like the manager of the rep, they're landing on this case, they can quickly and very um, easily see that something is overdue, and then. This is eight days overdue. That would never happen. This is, I should have updated this, but um, what it does is tells you right off the bat, you see this red flag here that we're, you know, we're late, something's wrong here. So you can immediately get into action, maybe what's going on, how come this customer, you know, this hasn't been verified. Well, it could be something like maybe this person is out sick or on vacation, right? You know, if you want to, you can come in and preview that task and you can very easily put that task in edit mode and maybe reassign it, right? So we know that Jim had to take a leave, so we're reassigning this uh, this task to somebody else, right? So that should be, I'll refresh that, and that will reassign to Melissa. So that's just a way giving you the visibility, giving you the ability to interact, giving you alert when something is past due or an SLA is not met. And then you can do things like reassigning uh, specific tasks or the entire case to somebody. All right, so, so those are uh, just a couple of different examples of how you can apply Automate to different, uh, different modules and different scenarios. I want to just wrap up by showing you a dashboard. And right here, this is an example of how you can use dashboards to display, you know, give, get a real bird's eye view of all of the processes that are in play. Now, you probably wouldn't have a dashboard with everything, but say if you were somebody in customer service, you may have this process on your service console. Or if you're a BDR, you might have the lead qualification process on your home dashboard. Right? So, so really what this is is just a list view. Right? So if you come here to configure, you can see it's a list view of the Sugar Automate. Right? And these are just the fields that I've chose, chosen to be uh, uh, displayed. And then I create a filter. I just want to see the lead qualification processes. So I've done that, you know, in each case, this is onboarding, you know, the competitive one. So this is giving me, you know, a view of everything that's going on, right? These are all the new leads we got today. I see the progress here by hovering. I can see we're 93%, you know, with Brian. We're only 33% with Christian. But I can also, because this is a list view, and we have the option to uh, leverage those focus rows. So here I can click on that icon, and here I can see Brian's full uh, lead record, and I can see that full process with all of the tasks involved as well. So I can see what's been done, what still needs to be done, and who's responsible for it, right? So as, as a rep, you know, I can see what I need to do. As a sales leader, you can see what your team is up to, you know, who's falling behind and who's, you know, who's right on track, right? So that was kind of a quick overview of, you know, 
different, a few different examples of Sugar Automate. And uh, you've seen that you can apply Sugar Automate to any module. You know, we saw it on leads, opportunity, account, cases. But you can also apply Sugar Automate templates to custom modules as well. Right? And the beautiful thing about it is it is no code. These are all configured in the admin panel. You know, somebody with admin rights can configure these templates and, you know, you get some that are out of the box and they can be configured, you know, specifically customized to your uh, specific use cases. No code required, no developer, uh, you know, credentials required. Right? Awesome. Well, thanks, Kim. That was a great demo. You're welcome. <laughs> We can go into the Q&A now. I personally had a question, you know, for either of you. Uh, if you had to kind of sum up, you know, the, uh, just say your top benefit that you could see a customer getting out of Sugar Automate, you know, what would that be? I think for me, uh, I could see how just having everything standardized so that there's no change in you know, how I do something versus how someone else mm -hmm. in my role does it would be beneficial to the company just to have that like same look across. Yes. I was yes. interested in hearing from you. Yeah, well, I actually have a, a real life example I'd like to um, just share. You know, we sat down with a customer a few years ago that was struggling with their processes. They have a pretty, they're a manufacturing company, they're pretty complex um, sales processes and, and project management processes. And they were all frustrated because, you know, as Brian talked about earlier, everything, everybody's working in a silo. And we sat down with every different department, everybody that touched an opportunity, marketing, sales, customer service, engineering, design, everybody said the exact same thing. We never know who has the ball. They don't know who's doing what. They don't know where they are. They don't know who's got the next task. So that's, we, we actually, one of our recommendations was, uh, you know, the Sugar Automate customer journey and they implemented it and it's working beautifully. So now everybody's got that picture of, you know, where is it sitting? Where is it getting held up? Is it getting held up in engineering? Why, why is it getting held up? Maybe they're waiting for something from design. So uh, that's a real, that was a real value to a real customer. Cool, thank you, um, Brian. Yeah, I think for us, it would be um, acceleration. And when I say acceleration, I'm talking about anything. Sales cycle, lead to lead to opportunity, um, customer support, escalation, or resolution. And I think what we've been able to do is we've, we've sat down as an organization of really, like just for example, if, if someone were to ask for something that goes, um, that requires finance approval. Um, we obviously have a very busy CFO and we didn't have certain uh, parameters or approvals that were mapped out. So we sat down and we went through some of those because instead of letting that be maybe a bottleneck to getting a deal done or getting a contract out the door, we we came up with some some blanket approvals that now can accelerate a sales cycle. So I think we've been able to accelerate our sales cycles with existing client base from, from 33 days down to 17 days using Sugar Automate. So it's really about acceleration. We do a lot. Um, day to day our team is responsible our teams are responsible for a lot of different things so making them as efficient as possible to accelerate in any role or any process has been um, critical to our, to our success using it. Awesome. Now we have a question from the audience. Um, so they were hold on one second. Yeah so this customer was uh, migrated or I guess you know, converted from Sugar Professional to Sugar Cell Advanced, uh, and they're asking, you know, is this Sugar Automate included uh, subscription? Yeah, so Sugar Automate is included uh, two ways. It's either included as part of Sugar Cell Premier, which would actually be an upgrade from Sugar Cell Advanced. It would really include Sugar Automate as, as well as a lot of other, basically all of our add-on functionality, or you can purchase Sugar Automate as an a la carte add-on to Sugar Cell Advance. Okay, so it's an add-on product. Uh, it used to be called Customer Journey. Okay, yep. If you uh, if you go to Sugar Premier, it would in be included as part of the entire package. If, if the audience doesn't know, Sugar Premier includes uh, if all, if not 
most, if not all, of the former uh, add-on products. Uh, yeah, it's it's, and if anyone has any questions of that following, we can reach out to Frank or yeah. DSM, and we can sit down and walk through what what's included as part of Premier, because it's basically if you're just looking at just sugar automate, we can look at what's the what's the trade-offs, what's the value. Versus if there's other things like inbox integration and sales intelligence, you know, it's forecasting, then it might make sense to upgrade to Premier. Sure. Uh, another question, you know, we talked a lot uh, during this about you know, processes that were defined um, and how we can use Sugar Automate to kind of follow along those defined processes. So the customer is asking, you know, what if their processes aren't quite defined yet? could this still be a tool that they could use yeah i think perfect opportunity to work with 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 us and with brain cell to sit down it's it's all about just getting started right you, you a lot of people do have processes that are defined just because they're not on paper um it, they still do things a certain way so getting that written down or getting it on paper getting it documented within sugar automate and getting that playbook it's just about getting started because then you learn from it, you become more efficient. You can optimize those processes. You can understand where the bottlenecks are. Um, so it's really just about getting started. And that's that's a, a normal place for a lot of our customers is they don't have them documented, they don't have them defined. We can work closely with, with brain cell on defining those for you. And Kim might have some. Yeah. Well, well and, and as they, you know, obviously things change and evolve. It's very easy because again, this is a no code configuration. You can go in, you can alter any of your templates, any of your defined processes, you can add steps, you can remove steps, you can add stages very, very easily through the user interface. Cool. Yeah, so you know, reach out to us if you have any questions about defining those processes. I know you know Brain Cell, we do blueprints for customers and as part of that, we may uh, you know, work with you to define some processes. Um, yeah, just to chime in there too, when you look at business process management, and this has come up for a number of years, but um, it's really about people processing technology. The Sugar Automate add-on is just a small part of the overall um, ability to be able to manage, define, and optimize your processes. Brain Cell obviously has the uh, well, brain cell working with you all is is the people, and then they're able to work on really kind of defining the process. So it's really a, a combination of the three that makes this successful. Thanks. Um, I, I think we had one more question. I guess I'm going to just kind of summarize it, but let's say they buy Sugar Automate, you know. And they want to just get a quick win like you know how i know there's no code but how long would it take them to kind of get get it into their system and put in some sort of simple process flow um you know, maybe well, give like an example of a quick win yeah well there it, it will come with um you know some predefined existing templates that you can you could just apply them, you could play around with them, you could test them out, and then you can use them to modify. So again, it's very easy, you know, it's very easy to configure, take, you know, we've got plenty of documentations to walk you through how to, you know, how to create these templates. Um, but I said, they, it will come with a couple of very basic ones, like a sales process or a lead qualification. So those will be existing, you can start there, and then you could add on as your uh, processes become more defined. And I think it would be identifying what the product like lead conversion is probably one of the quicker um, processes, right? It may be not the um, the new account onboarding that might be over a 90 day. You're not going to start to see the results of that until you get kind of start to get through the entire process. So sitting down and kind of saying what which, which those defined playbooks um, can we get up and running quickly? And it's very, very easy to get up and running. Um, and then being able to kind of understand, to report on them, to action on them, to optimize them. So it'd be about sitting down and, and we can get something stood up quickly and start reporting on that or start kind of understanding what are the success metrics very quickly working with both you and Brain Cell. Cool. Well, that was all the uh, questions we had for today. Um, 
So I just want to say uh, thank you to Kim and to Brian. Um, this was a great example of you know, some of the things that Sugar Automate can help our customers do. Um, I want to say we will be sharing the recording uh, and we'll follow up with you all later uh, this week and get feedback on the content and schedule any next steps. Um, if you are interested in learning more, you know, feel free to reach out to either Jenna or myself as your customer success managers at BrainCell. Um, and you know, we're happy to answer any questions. Um, yeah, so reach on out or you can email growth at braincell.com.